Here we are looking at some models which I painted in the last week or so. Uh, they've been airbrushed. They are from Railpath of Europe and they are in the Battletech range of miniatures from their aircraft range which you can see on their website. You can uh, see on the far bottom right here that's a Slayer. Uh, in the middle the one that looks like a sort of a fat bomber is a Reaver and at the back there slightly out of focus is a Shalone or a Shalon, not 100% sure how you pronounce it. And uh, say so I've got a pair of each miniature and I'm going to airbrush them up. So for this stage I was just cleaning them up using uh, some small files to clean up any flash along the edges of the aircraft and I also after I did that I dropped them into a bath of white vinegar. Uh, some people just use soapy water but I like to use the vinegar to really strip off any of the release agent from the uh, casting process. They only go in for about 20 minutes and pull down and they come out sort of nice and shiny at which point then I glue them together because again with the vinegar it's stripped off any muck and uh, especially any muck from my fingers that I've been doing when I uh, handle them while I file them down because they get sort of hot and sweaty so that cleans them all off. Uh, out of the vinegar bath I then uh, drop them into some soapy water. I use a Tamiya Fine primer and then for the base airbrush coat on they used I used a, a life colour paint called Israeli Sand Grey you can see here I've then gone over with some Tamiya masking tape. I uh, basically sellotape the masking tape onto the cutting mat and then cut it into various little small triangles and patches. And then you can see how I've then dropped that on and stuck them along the wings to give it that sort of uh, uh, very sharp edge to the camo. So that's directly on top of the Israeli sand grey. Now you can see that I've used a, a green from model air and uh, that's given it a really nice sharp contrast which is great at this sort of small scale because uh, the contrast really catches the eye. However I am going to put a filter over the top of this because the um, that very sharp camo can sort of distract you and t distracts the detail away from the miniature. So the whole thing needs a little bit of toning down. The filter used directly onto this was a NATO filter for um, from 8K Interactive and that goes on like an enamel. And you paint it sort of liberally across the whole miniature and it leaves it with a slight sort of sandy look and sort of tones down the whole look of that camo. On the right here you can see that 8K Interactive filter and also some of the life colour colours I used as well. That's from the Rust range, and this new one here is from their Tensnochrome range, which are very thin uh, washes, ideal for detailing. That's their fuel colour, and uh, obviously it's like a very thin red wash, but that goes on like a sort of red fuel stain, ideal for small details and pooling colours. Right at the end of this video, I've got a sequence of photos which show more of those stages as they break down as I add the washes and detailing on. And here you can see the actual finished result. In the bottom left of the frame at the moment, you can see a sponge in a small plastic pot. I used some of that sponge to place some of the rust effects. I wasn't trying to make these aircraft look really rusty and beaten up but I wanted to sort of damage them slightly across the front. So I used the rust dark colour from Life Colour and I just dabbed it and almost like I was dry brushing I made the sponge almost dry of the paint and then I used it to sort of imprint along the front of the wings which gives it that sort of rusty look. I then used various other little washes on there, some brown washes and a rust wash as well but I didn't want to go on too heavy with that since the models are very small. I used a lot of the Private Press P3 mixing medium when doing the cockpits. Instead of my usual bright dual effect which I go for, and I think I've done a guide in my video sets on YouTube for dual effects, I wanted to go for something a lot darker and to make it look like the light was inside the cockpit rather than being an external reflection of sunlight or the clouds etc. So I used the dark red and in addition to the dark red 
uh, which you can see later in the photos, I put some very tiny dots of white, kind of a washed out white, along the top of the cockpit. Now the idea of that, although it doesn't come out that well, was to make it look like tiny instrument lights reflecting off the interior of the cockpit. And uh, in one or two cases, like on the um, uh, that Shalone one there, you get a, a little kind of impression of there somehow being some lights inside. And I also obviously did a gradient from black through to a uh, private impress uh, red colour mixing in the P3 medium as well, which gives it that gradient. So that was basically blending through from black to a red along the bottom. You can see there that I was messing around with the various uh, bases there. They've got magnets on them, they're from Corsac Engineering, and they do a telescopic one in the range, as you can see, it's going out of the frame there. And I used a neodymium um, magnet, which is on the bottom, glued on, and that just clamps it on neatly. Although the actual models were painted and photographed at the end of the video to go on the official bases that they're supplied with from Ralpartha Europe. Okay, so the music's going to get a little bit upbeat now. Oh, there's my Privateer Press mixing medium. Great for blending. A couple of drops of that in with a paint and it blends well. So now we're on to the slideshow and this is just going to show the various stages in the painting. So there's the uh, plain miniatures after they've been glued together. Um, here you can see that's the, the green airbrushed onto the uh, camo pattern. You can just see underneath and there you go actually. There's me pulling off the pieces of uh, masking tape revealing the camo style. So there's the final pattern together uh, with all of the bits of uh, tape removed. This is the rust and you can see the sponge there and how I was protesting the sponge on a piece of wood. And by using a sponge and just dappling across the front of that wing I was able to sort of give it a kind of beaten up rusty look. Or at least the look of them maybe coming in and out of atmosphere. Then I use a very fine brush, that's in fact a Tamiya brush to dot on some more little bit of damaged marks up against the wings. Here you can see after they've been dull coated and uh, not very sharp picture sorry but uh, there they are lined up. So here's the final photos and they're the proper official Ralpartha bases that they're supplied with. Uh, nice little hex bases and they just pop up underneath into a hole and you can see the cockpit glow there and the tiny white dots I put onto the cockpit to look as if there are instrument lights inside. Okay, there's the Shalom, and uh, uh, here they are lined up after I had put on that filter which I mentioned earlier. You can see they've taken on that kind of brownish candy colour. I'm using Microsol here which uh, is a um, fixer to melt the decals slightly so when you put them on it smooths them out perfectly. So look out for Microsol, it allows you to put the most flat decals on. I actually apply it about four times it slowly makes the decal thinner and thinner until it's almost like paint and then finally obviously once you've sealed them in uh, they go, go on nice and flush. There's the slayer from the side, slayer from the rear. I used a mix of decals from various different companies uh, that I just sort of had in my collection really. I think this Reaver is basically my favourite, it has that sort of chunky bomber look and I uh, say I think it's around 100 tonnes in the uh, Battletech rules, so it's a big aircraft. So thanks very much for listening in. Please uh, post something in a comment if you can. If you've got anything to say or questions, I shall answer them. And also subscribe, please. And uh, naturally, I'll come and subscribe to your channel if you've got one. Cheers. Bye.